Hey everybody, welcome to day two of the Ultimate Swimmer March Madness NCAA recap show. It's Thursday, March 18th, and we had day two of Division two NCAA men's and women's and Division one women. So we're going to talk about Division two first, and of course, the resident expert and co-host and producer of the show, Noah, the genius Yanchulis, will kick us off with the latest news in Division two championships. All right. I appreciate the intro. And uh, yeah, it was a good it was a good day. I think that uh, it was nice that they bounced back after the weather stuff that happened yesterday. So D2, if you didn't listen yesterday or aren't familiar, they swam. They didn't swim finals last night. So they swam the events that would have been last night this morning. And then all of today's events they swam as a time final session in the evening. Um, and they actually got delayed again tonight for an hour and a half or so because of some more weather stuff, but eventually they were able to, able to finish it out. But so going back to all of yesterday's events, they swam those this morning. That was the, the thousand free final 200 IM 50 free 200 medley relay. And, uh, we'll start with the, we'll start with the women's, um, I guess, yeah, we'll do all the women's first for, uh, day one and two, and then we'll go back and do the men's. But so Allison Weber from Drury, she won the thousand free. 953 and uh it was a pretty pretty dominant performance she won by over two seconds uh that was a good that was a good win for her and then 200 im was uh marziel van yarsfeld uh, and she's a senior at indianapolis 157 8 in the 200 im and i believe she transferred from obu a couple years back and so she's doing really well at indianapolis now which is great to see yeah. And then in the women's 50 free, Danielle Malili from Queens, just a sophomore, uh, swam 22 5 7, won by almost three tenths, and just kind of dominated that race. Uh, one of her teammates finished six in that race. So Queens got some nice points in the 50 free. And then to finish off the morning session, the Queens women swam 140.1 in the 200 medley relay. And that was Rachel Massaro, Danielle Malili, Kayla Tennant, and Natalie Van Noy. And I thought it was interesting because they swam exactly their seed time. So talk about consistency. Queens knows how to do it. That's good. Yeah, those relay points and a good showing in the morning will uh, set them apart, I think, uh, for the rest of the meet. Um, I think it's interesting to look at the fastest splits. Um, back was Laura Pajareja from Jury, 24.8. Breast was uh, Ann Sophie from Wingate, 27.8. Fly, Mackenzie Weiberg from Jury, 24.0. And then uh, Leticia Vasili from Indy was the fastest free split, 22.56. What I thought was interesting about that was that Queens won the event, but they had none of the fastest splits. So they were pretty good, but they didn't have any of the fastest splits, which is was kind of interesting for a team to win it. Yeah, their overall depth did it. That's cool. Yeah, absolutely. And then, uh, so that was a good morning for Queens and, you know, they had to mentally shift to typically you do the same event in the morning and at night, but today was a little different because of the weather. So moved on to tonight, 200 freestyle relay, hundred fly, 4am, 200 free, 400 medley relay. Indianapolis won the 200 free relay, 130.9. That was a dominant showing for them. And, uh, just out touched Queens actually by a couple tenths. Lucia Martelli from Delta State. She's a senior, got a win in the 100 fly, 53-0. And again, these were being swum as time finals. So really, even if you were in the first heat, you had the potential to, to win the event. So you weren't, you may not have been next to the fastest seed, so you kind of had to just go all out and hope for the best. Um, 400 IM, Bet Cross from Drury, 414-1, uh, won, won that event uh, pretty comfortably. And then... Uh, who else did we have? Paige Micasell from IUP, 148 in the 200 freestyle. And then Queens, again, won the 400 medley relay, 338-0 with Massaro, Malili, Tennant, and, uh, and Baker. And like usual, it's Queens and Drury and Indy, you know, right there together on a lot of those relays. On the men's side, it's kind of Queens, Drury, Indy, and McKendry. Um, but it's just, they're just such great rivalries, um, between these top three or four teams. It's pretty fun to watch when you're, when you're watching the live stream. So they, they really did well, all things considered with the tornado delays and the, the shifting of the schedule. Yeah, absolutely. And then, uh, just to quick 
go run over the fastest splits from the women's session for those for those relays. Um, it was Lexi Baker, Weinberg again, uh, Vaselli and Malili all between twenty two three and twenty two six. And uh, and then for the four hundred medley relay splits, Laura Pareja again fifty two four uh, hundred back split, which is really nice. And then Lily Borgenheimer from Colorado Mesa had the fastest uh, breaststroke split on a relay that I believe finished like 12th or 13th, but she was one double O point nine, which was just phenomenal. And then, uh, Lucia Martelli, Delta state 53, one and Lexi Baker from Queens had the fastest freestyle split at 49 zero. Yeah. So the women's race Queens has a big lead at three fourteen to Drury's two thirty two, Indy a little bit back in two Oh six and Lindenwood just behind them one ninety three, and Tampa down in fifth for one nineteen. So, Queens is off to a really solid first two days. Yeah. I mean, obviously a lot, a long way to go, but yeah, to have a, you know, have a, a 60, 70 point lead, almost 80 point lead going into, into day three is a, is a pretty good sign. So Queens should be feeling pretty good. And on the men's side, uh, it's a little closer battle between Drury and Queens. Drury is really holding their own well. Um, but man, McKendry, as the distance king, it's looking like. Absolutely, yeah. Fabio Dalou, he's a sophomore at McKendry. He won the thousand last year, right before the meet got got postponed and canceled because of COVID. But he came back this year, eight fifty four one. He broke the NCAA record and obviously was a, a lifetime best for him. And uh, yeah, he he's real real dominant in the distance events. And then he is going to be looking to win the five hundred and win the mile as well coming up but he was very dominant and then uh you had the delta state junior emmanuel fava win the 200 im 143.9 and then the super super sprint stud from drury carl ostrowski he broke the meet record in the 50 freestyle 19-1 was a little bit off his lifetime best but we'll talk about it in a sec but he came back and swam a really great lead off leg of the 200 free relay at night but he got the individual win and then Drury came back right after that, actually without Car- Carol, and they won the 200 medley relay, broke the NCAA record, and uh, had a 18-6 split from Alex Bowen to anchor that relay. So, while they have the fastest sprinter in the country in Carol, they've also got another guy, Alex Bowen, who can split 18-6. So it's not like they're missing much. Yeah, Bowen did a great job. Fastest back was Jaron Thompson, 21-3. From Indy, fastest breast was another Indy guy, Jan Zukawik, 23.5. And uh, the fly guy from McKendry, Greg Lachinsky, 20.2. Lachinsky, that's how you say it, 20.2. So, yeah, and Alex, 18.6. That's big time. That's really, really nice. So Drury won the tuner free. Uh, oh, so we get to tonight, which is a whole new session, all new events, tuner free, hunter fly, 400 IM. Um, and then individual 200 free and 400 medley. So Drury's on a roll. They kick it off with another NC2A record. Yeah. 116.9 NCAA record. They broke Tampa's, uh, I think, three or, or four or five year old record of 117.2. But then Carroll led off this relay 18.92. So that was the fastest Division II swim in history. First Division II swimmer ever to break 19. And uh, that's a huge, a huge swim for him. And uh, obviously kept the momentum rolling for, for Drury. Um, but, you know, Queens has a lot of depth and, and Queens was able to challenge a little bit later in the night. But uh, Hunter Fly went to Tim Stallings, probably the, I would say, the most unknown school maybe at this entire meet, Findlay, out of, I think it's a small school in Ohio, but Tim Stallings is a sophomore. He went 45-5 to win the event. Yeah. And uh, that was pretty cool. And yeah, one of our guys on our team warned us about him, said, hey, I know this guy. He went 46 in a training suit. He should go 45. And I I didn't believe him at first. (laughs) Sure enough, the guy's 45-5 and he wins it running away. So way to go, Tim Stallings. Yeah, that was awesome. And then uh, and Fabio, again, the McKendry distance guy, he came back in the 400 IM just a few hours after swimming the 1,000 free in the morning. And he was able to go 345 to win that event by about two seconds and uh, a little bit off the NCAA record, but I'm sure, you know, by the time he's a senior, he's going to be challenging that 343 record. And then uh, probably the most exciting race of the night. And Josh, I could let, I'll let you take it, take it away. But the 200 free was, it was a really, really close race. And uh, actually you can't really get much closer. 
Yeah, they exactly tie, but how it went down was crazy. Carol Ostrowski, coming off his 18-9, just had beautiful speed. He was out in 21 at the 50, 44-1 at the 100 at the halfway. I mean, he must have had a body length and a half lead at the 125. But uh, Kernert down in lane one, was just sneaking up, sneaking up, and split a 23 on the end, and they tied. He totally caught him a body length on the last 50 and they tie. And you could tell Carol was just like, you got to be kidding me. Because he <laughs> knew he was a, over a by length ahead at the 150. Yeah. It's funny because as you're watching it, you see, I mean, obviously they're going fast. They're they're about two body lengths ahead of everyone else in the pool at this point. But they both hit the wall. And it's like you're waiting for one of them to celebrate. And they, you just there's never a celebration. And <laughs> you, so you can't really tell what happens. But they ended up ended up tying. So it's a little frustrating. I'm, I'm sure they both wish that they were able to have a, a second swim in that one. But I'm sure they'll take a take an NCAA championship anyways. Yeah. They're both they're both first. So I guess that helps a little bit. <laughs> Alex, Alex Kunert, he uh, had a heck of a finish. Um, Medley relay jury guys were on a roll. 308 is really good. Yeah. And really, really good. They again didn't they didn't use Carroll on this relay either. Alex Bowen anchored again 42-9, but yeah, they were huge. I think Queens has the NCAA record at 307-9, I believe. So they were just off the uh just off the NCAA record in that as well. So, you know, it's kind of the Queens and Drury show as always. Yeah, but great depth all the way across the top eight. Um, you know, Indy 311, Queens 310, Delta State 310 is big time for them. McKendry 309. I mean, it was, and then Drury wins with a 308. I mean, those are all super solid relays. Yep. And hats off to all these guys for, you know, adjusting to the schedule and making the most of a time final. And, and again, there's nobody in the stands, hardly, just the teams. And um, so, yeah, there's a lot they're adjusting with this whole year and especially at this particular meet. So good on them. Yeah, I think it's kind of, in a way, just how crazy the year has been the past and really the past 12 months, it kind of, I mean, I'm sure it made this whole thing a little bit more manageable because I think had this happened in a normal year with the weather, it, it really would have thrown some people off. But it, I mean, this year with everything that's gone on, it's not really like anything can surprise us at this point. So I think, you know, I'm sure that that helped out mentally a little bit because everybody seemed to come back and, and swim pretty well. Yeah. I, I think everybody's just so happy to have a meet that they can, you can throw anything at them now and they'll, they'll adjust to it. So, <laughs> yeah. But, uh, but yeah, the men's team's race, I, I thought jury would be a little bit higher, but Queens has 315 to jury's 270. And then uh, yep. way, way back in third is Lindenwood 170, McKendry 167, Indy 161. So a good battle for third, but uh, yeah, it's going to be a nice little dogfight between Queens and Drury the next two days. Yeah, it's tough. Queen's got Queen just has a lot of depth, but it will yeah. be it'll be a good fight. Um but uh yeah, so we'll have some some more good racing for for D2 tomorrow and the schedule will be back to normal, so it'll be prelims finals again, you know, hoping there's no crazy weather things. Yes, so good stuff happening in Birmingham, Alabama for D2 champs. And uh but in Greensboro, North Carolina, we have the women's meet. Day 2 went down. And uh, we got the Toner Free Relay. Uh, California upset Virginia, despite Kate Douglas's 2109, third fastest all time. California yep. averages 21s and wins. It's pretty yeah. cool. I think Cal was a little bit, a little bit, uh, you know, more aggressive and had a little bit more enthusiasm today. You know, after losing the uh, eight free relay yesterday, I think they were coming back a little hungrier. But yeah, Isabel Ivy had a great, uh, I mean, really all the girls had a great split. Eloise Riley let off 22-0 and that was the slowest split, but then they were just 21 twos the rest of the way. So they were able to just out-touch Virginia by uh, two tenths. And again, Kate Douglas is a beast though, leading off 21-0 and going the third fastest of all time. Yeah, but it was pretty cool to see Isabel Ivy just take on Alex Walsh full force, and then they go at it. Yeah, but it was really um, Elise Garcia's third leg for California that gave him the cushion. So, anyway, so that was fun. NC State had a very nice time. Uh, Burkoff leading off in twenty one eight is huge for a backstroker. Yep. Um, so that that was fun, and um, m makes the point. You know, the team race a little more exciting. Absolutely. Uh, 500 free 
uh, Paige from Virginia was so strong. She led from start to finish and really, really did a good job in the middle, kind of separating herself from the others. Um, so she, it looked, you know, like it was expected. Like that's what she wanted. She trained for that for two years and made it happen. Um, but Evie Pfeiffer from Texas, upsetting Brooke Forty and Sierra Schmidt, all of them seniors, all four of those people seniors, um, was kind of interesting. So I, me being a Texas guy, I was super happy for Evie Pfeiffer. And what we learned tonight from that we'll hear later on from Madison is that um, Evie had set the goal. Her goal time this year was four thirty five zero four, and she went four thirty five zero two. <laughs> fascinating the power of goal setting absolutely yeah that's i mean she was obviously working towards that that all year and sometimes you just put the time in your head and the hard work will pay off like that so yeah it's pretty cool pretty cool um but yeah i gotta wonder if there's the corona distance effect happening where there just was a few months in the last 12 months that might where a lot of people didn't have consistent training. And I wonder if we're seeing just a couple of, maybe a second or two slower, maybe three seconds slower than normal um, yeah. for some of these ladies. But, you know, so it's kind of interesting to wonder. Yeah, Two absolutely. Animals next. Alex put on a show. Alex Walsh, the freshman from Virginia, just had a beautiful fly, unbelievable back, back to breast turn, killed everybody, and um, had one of the fastest, uh, last hundreds as well. One fifty one eight looked really, really nice. Yeah, she was. She was. She looked smooth. And I, I do. I do want to point out. And it was kind of. We had talked about. We talked about this before. But one fifty one eight. She was. She was a little bit off her best time. And I'm sure she wanted to go a little bit faster. But as a freshman, winning an NCAA individual title, and she hit the wall, and it was just like no expression, no nothing. And I was like, come on, Alex, like, how about <laughs> let's, let's get pumped up a little bit. So I was just like, what the heck is going on? She won by almost two seconds, you know, ran away with it and, uh, just kind of shrugged and got out of the water. Yeah. Business as usual. Um, yeah. So you, you got to wonder what, what their mindset is. Are they just so focused on the team title that they're, they don't want to enjoy too much along the way, you know? It's that it's fair enough. Yeah, it, it's tough to find that perfect balance where you're really in the moment, you're really celebrating the wins, mm -hmm. and and yet the team title kind of takes care it takes care of itself, and you're not too stressed about it, and you're free to celebrate certain things. So, you know, I saw that with Louisville at, at the ACC meet a few weeks ago, where they weren't yeah. worried about the team title; they just kind of focused on each race and really celebrated when it was appropriate. And sure enough, they end up winning. So anyway, I hope Virginia finds that nice balance because, but they're, but they're a fairly young team. Um, but another, it kind of same thing happened again. Another Virginia person won the 50 free. Yep. Kate so, Douglas. So and, now they've won all three individual events. Keep in mind. <laughs> yeah. And Kate was like, okay, that was cool. And, <laughs> you know, it was just <laughs> kind of interesting. Now, Maggie McNeil was right on her. Maggie was so fun to watch. And then I, I got to mention Sarah Thomas, a Thompson from Missouri, 21-4 for third. She's yeah. teammates with my son, Luke at Davis at Missouri. So uh, the Missouri women had a very good night. Megan Keel uh, won consoles with a 21-8. So Missouri yep. had, a, had a very nice showing. And um, so anyway, I, I thought the 50 was fun. But I think Kate Douglas can spin her arms even faster. I think there's way more in the tank for her. And yeah. Uh, I do want to point out too that her start to me when I when I watch it, it's like everybody's off the block and then Kate decides to go. Like it's just like there's something more that she can have out of the start. I don't know. That just, I mean, obviously twenty one one and then twenty one zero on the relay can't argue with it much, but it just does feel like there's a little bit more to be had. Yeah, when when I look at the turnover of of some of the others, like Abby Weitzel that finally broke twenty one zero. You know, if Kate, she's obviously grabbing a ton of water and she's got great dolphins, but if she spins those arms just a little bit faster, she could be the first person to go 20, you know, 20.7 possibly, because it just seems, it seems like a yeah. hundred, almost a 200 stroke rate. It's fast. It's super efficient. I will say it looks like one of the, the strongest freestyles I've ever seen. And it just looks so, so light and, and effortless. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, huge night for for Virginia, um, winning those three individuals. 
So maybe they can start to relax and enjoy it and celebrate a little bit more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I hope so. I think it'll get it, it should get a little bit easier, I think, if they start opening up the lead, which it seems like they will. Um, especially after, and we'll get into it now, Cal DQ'd their 400 medley relay at, to end the night. Um, I believe Emily Gontrice, their anchor, jumped a little bit early. And uh, so that's a huge, a huge hit for Cal. Huge. It doesn't necessarily mean they're out of it, but losing an entire relay is pretty, pretty impossible to come back from. So yeah, that was, that was a, that was a tough blow. Yeah, that, that was hard. And uh, maybe this will be the thing that <laughs> lets Virginia celebrate a little bit more. But Virginia got second to to NC State's new NCAA and U.S. Open record, the fastest relay ever. And uh, this was NC State women's first ever title, and their first NCAA title, and they bust the record going out. So it's, it's Burkhoff's 50.0, Sophie so Hansen's 57.0 for the breaststroke, Alon's was huge. Kylie went 49-2 fly. Julia Poole, it didn't matter what she went because those three girls were so fast. She only went 48-2, which is still really good. But when yeah. Simone Manuel uh, anchored Stanford to the previous record, she was 45-8 like eight, or 45-6, something crazy. Yeah. And it is. It's crazy. Like, Julia Poole is obviously a great a great swimmer a great sprinter but like you look at 48 2 if you cover up the rest of the splits and just see 48 2 you're like okay yeah they probably went like 330 330 like you know like there's no way they're breaking a record with a 48 2 anchor yeah but they did so they did so that's pretty cool but but hats off to virginia they were right there i mean you know they were just a couple hundreds off the old record the old stanford record themselves yep. uh, so that was cool um, Kate Douglas, 46, three was pretty awesome. And, um, they, their, their backstroke girl, Riley Tiltman did a good job. 50.4, but Texas got third. So I got to throw that in there. So yep. Kelly Pash had a 47, five relay split. And I watched, when I was watching the race, I thought her exchange was so crazy, scary. And sure enough, it was negative 0.01. <laughs> Can't the most get any closer. Perfect. The most perfect start you can have without being disqualified. If you're negative 0.02, you're out. But the yeah. timing system allows you to go negative 0.01. Holy cow! Amazing. A lot of the a lot of the exchanges were pretty close, and I thought that actually uh, Virginia's flyer Lexi Cuomo. I thought it looked just watching it looked like she may have jumped early, but yeah, Kelly Pash was. A little too close for comfort, and then Texas was kind of gifted that bronze medal because Cal got DQ'd, but yeah. it uh, it paid off. So, yeah, very interesting stuff. Oh, by the way, Maggie McNeil yes. led off in forty nine point seven hundred back, so that was with her awesome dolphin kicks. So, yeah, it was a great, great first day, and uh, or second day rather, um, and it's kind of fun to get some insight from um, an NC two A. A uh, female who, who's been in it, um, Madison Cox from Texas, had a, had a very successful collegiate career. And so we're going we're gonna to hear from Madison real quick about her thoughts from the meet. So Madison, thanks for joining us on our March Madness uh, NCAA recap each night. And tonight was the 200 IM and um, day two of the meet. So tell us where you are now and if you're enjoying the meet. Oh, absolutely. So... Um, well, first of all, thank you for having me. And I'm currently, I'm in Lubbock, Texas, um, training with my two other post-grad teammates, Remedy Rule and Joanna Evans. And we're, we've been, you know, we've been training here every day and getting out early out of practice just to make sure we're, we're home in time to watch the, the me and the races. And, you know, last night I started off with a great 800 free relay. I always love looking through Meet Mobile, like looking through all the splits, seeing who did what. It, it's a pretty good indicator of what's to come, and it was pretty exciting, especially for Texas. We were all Texas grads, so we're, we're really rooting for Texas there. And um, we had a good 800 free relay, followed it up with a great day-to-day. -day. We had EV Pfeiffer in the 500 free. was just, I mean, we got chills watching it. It was incredible. The 200 IM was awesome to watch. Alex Walsh, was, she's an impressive swimmer. 50 free Kate Douglas. And I was just actually learning tonight about her versatility. I mean, I think she could have been top seed in like, I mean, five, six events. I don't know what the actual number was, but that was just impressive. Um, 
And then we just watched the Porter Medley Relay, which um, that was always my favorite relay. That was a lot of my favorite races from Texas were from that relay. And so it was really cool seeing Texas keeping the tra- tradition alive. They just got third. Um, they should be very happy with that. So we're, I think we're, we've got a lot to look forward to the next two days. Yes. I was so pumped for Evie. That 435 is her best time, right? Yeah. And you, you know what I just found out too? So I'm with Joanna Evans, who was our former school record holder in that event. And um, Evie's goal at the beginning of the year was to break her record by one one hundredth of a second. And she broke, broke it by three one hundredths of a second tonight. So that was <laughs> oh pretty special. Goodness. That's incredible. Sorry, jo- <laughs> sorry, Joanna. She broke your record. But- oh, no, we couldn't be more thrilled. I I mean, that's all you want, you know, as an alumni yeah. for the programs. I want Kelly Pash and Evie, everyone break all my records. It means we're, we're doing something right. Oh, that's cool. It's got to be rewarding. You're still able to train with them and push them and, and uh, you know, help support them like this. I just think oh, that's absolutely. so cool. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so you think Kelly would, was pleased with her swim tonight? Was it, how was, what was faster tonight or at conference? Um, I think they're uh, pretty similar. She had a good race, um, tonight. I think, I think she'll be happy with it, but I know she's really stoked for her 200 free tomorrow. Um, and she's, I mean, you got to also remember she's on every single relay. Um, I think, or no, she, she's taking medley relay off, I think. But other than that, I mean, she's in every single relay. She's really doing the most for the team. Just, I don't, I mean, points wise, she's just incredible. And I think she had a great tuner I am tonight. And I think her tuner free tomorrow is going to be really good. And her tuner yeah. fly the last day too. That's, I mean, I'm just excited to watch everyone. Oh, I know. I mean, their tuner fly from conference was incredible. So that'll be cool too. Yeah. Um, what was your best? Now you just went a best time in the tuner I am um, a few weeks ago. What was, what was that time? I did. I, so we just suited up in practice one day. Um, and I did a tuner I am. I was like a 152 O, I think. Um, yeah. it was pretty solid. Yeah. I was watching it tonight. I was like, Oh, that'd be kind of fun to be in the race. I mean, I'm, I'm definitely far removed, but it's still, I still have some foam. I'm like, Oh, I wish I could be out there fighting with my team. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's fun just to be able to watch and, and see all of them do so well. So you, so you would have gotten second tonight. Is that right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. That's so cool. Yeah. Well, what was your best split on the foreigner medley relay ever in the uh, breaststroke? Do you remember? I don't know. I think it was a seven high or eight oh or something like that. Um, mm. That was always a fun one because you know it was right after the two hundred IM. I was pumped up and we and I had my best friend and roommate on the team, Tasia Krosis, would lead it off, and I got to go off of her. So I was I was always just excited. And you know, I'm hundred breaststroke is a little is a little bit of a sprint for me, but I would always you know just do whatever I could um, to go fast for Texas. Yeah. Well, you're, you're, you've been a great support to Texas this year and in the past. Hard to believe this is your fourth year out of, out of college. I know. Year pro. I know. Yeah. But um, keep up the great work, training, and, um, and of course, we'll be cheering on Texas. And uh, they're, they're looking great. So thanks for joining us for a little uh, recap fun. And, yeah, uh, absolutely. Thanks for having me, Josh. I appreciate it. Go Horns. Welcome. All right. Very cool to hear from Madison Cox, a great swimmer training for the Olympics this summer. And uh, we wish her all the best. So where does that leave us with the team standing so far, Noah? Yeah, I mean, Virginia has a comfortable, comfortable lead at this point. Um, 184, they're in first. NC State, 124. Texas, 119 in third. Cal dropped down to fourth with 114. And then Ohio State's in there in fifth with 101. So, I mean, with that relay, obviously... Cal is in second comfortably. And, uh, you know, so now they're in fourth, 70 points behind Virginia and just have a lot of work to do. But uh, it looks like NC State and Texas are in a good spot. And uh, we'll, I guess we'll just kind of see if Cal can climb back. But I feel like at this point, if Virginia just swims even close to their, their psych sheet projections, they're going to be cruising for the rest of the weekend. Yeah. And hopefully we'll see some more smiles and celebrating from them. Absolutely. So, and there's still some more racing going on ar- around the country. Um, some cool age group stuff happened today. Yeah. And like just one of those headlines you read and it just doesn't really make sense. <laughs> but uh, there's a, a girl named uh, Levaniah Sim and she broke Reagan Smith's 100 backstroke uh, national age group record for, for a 14 year old, uh, 51 0. And this was at. Uh, 
where was this? This is oh, this was at NCSA, sorry, in yeah. Orlando. And uh, geez, I mean, fifty one zero for a fourteen year old is just incredible. She she was a fifty one nine coming into the meet, and uh, Reagan Smith had gone fifty one zero nine back in uh, twenty seventeen or sixteen, and then uh, yeah, eleven ISM 20, 50, I hope I'm saying that right. Fifty one zero three new NAG. Yeah, fifty one zero. Most fourteen year old guys dream about going that fast. And, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't know if it's Lavinia or Lavinia. Lavinia, I don't know, but uh, she's fast and uh, excited to see what happens with her in the future. You know, could she be on par to do things like Reagan Smith is doing now? Reagan's the top backstroker ever. Yeah, um, in several event in several backstroke races. So, so very very cool. Um, well, day three is tomorrow, March nineteenth. So we'll be back tomorrow night with uh, all the recap and highlights of day three for D2 and women's D1 and anything else that's cool going on in the swimming world. So for Noah Yonchulis, I'm Josh Davis. We'll see you next time. So keep smiling and keep streamlining. Bye-bye, everybody.